Well, I got this kilowatt power meter, and a while ago it started giving ridiculous readings like 150 volts instead of 120 volts. And now it's hardly showing anything at all. If you shine a light at just the right angle, you can see it's reading something, maybe 192 volts, but uh, something drastically wrong with it. Let's get it apart. So pretty minimal circuitry here. Not really much you could replace or that would go bad. A possibly capacitor there. Let's get this board out. Okay, so here it is. It's supposed to be 100 microfarads. Let's just check it with the LCR meter. 93. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but... But it's not testing bad on the meter anyway. If you follow the leads here, it looks like it goes to these two diodes. So I guess it's a power supply filter capacitor. And let's just see if it's getting any power. Okay, I've got an extension cord here. Let's just see if there's any voltage across that capacitor. Plug it in. Oh, huh. four volts. Well, I don't know what it's supposed to be, of course, but four volts sounds a little low. I think that's got to be the power supply for the whole uh, unit here. And plus, it's a 35-volt capacitor. Why would you put a 35-volt capacitor if it's only four volts? Unplug it here. Anyway, I'm a little confused about this power supply. It's got, looks like the line is coming through a resistor, then it goes to diodes in opposite directions. They're both coming off that resistor, and then they go to opposite sides of the uh, capacitor. So I'm not sure how that works. So I think I'm going to try to trace out the uh, power supply here, try to figure out what's going on. Okay, I think I've got the main power circuits traced out here. Here's the plug, here's the outlet, and then to power the electronics they're using a capacitive drop power supply where you run the line through a capacitor to uh, drop the voltage without a lot of heat dissipation. And then charge up this filter capacitor. This is a little bit unusual though because it's only a half wave rectifier. So normally that would just charge up the drop uh, capacitor and then stop. So to discharge this capacitor each time they have to have a reverse diode to discharge it on the negative half cycle and then it can keep charging this uh, capacitor here. Also, normally you'd have a Zener diode here to uh, regulate the voltage. Instead, this seems to go into a 
some kind of regulatory transistor. So I'm not clear to me exactly how they're regulating the voltage here. But, but still, we can go in and check all these components, see if there's something in here that could account for the very low voltage uh, we see on the capacitor. Okay, so let's just check some of these components. Here's a resistor, brown, black, brown, supposed to be 100. That's okay. And here's those two diodes. This will be forward direction. Point six three reverse direction. open circuit and the other diode forward direction point six two reverse direction open circuit Here's a fuse. Two point four, two point three. I guess that's okay. I'm not sure why it isn't zero. But uh, how about this big uh, voltage drop capacitor? Supposed to be point four seven. Uh, point two. Try the other direction. Still point two. Huh. So that is the, the drop capacitor. So you'd think if that had two small capacitors that that would cause a uh, lower voltage, which of course is, is a symptom that we see. So I guess I would try to replace this this capacitor, see what that does. Okay, so I got a replacement capacitor. Uh, it wasn't cheap, about uh, $3. And it's interesting, when I look for 0.47 X1 capacitors on DigiKey, uh, there were dozens of them, and they're all way bigger than the one that's in there. I did find one that's this size, and that one was uh, out of stock and discontinued. Makes you think that maybe when they tried to make it this small that it uh, led to a high failure rate, and so they discontinued it. There's another interesting thing is that if you look at where this capacitor is mounted, it looks like they actually made provision for putting larger capacitors in here. So they've got three contacts go into the uh, same connection. Uh, as if you can put capacitors of various sizes in here. And this is one size that uh, definitely has a connection. Um, so I'm just going to going to swap these two capacitors.
Well, it's out. So there's a special capacitor, a so-called safety capacitor, that's designed to go directly across an AC line. And it can tolerate very large surge voltages, I think something like a thousand volts. It has a, that's an X1 rating. But let's just recheck it outside the circuit. Still point two. So uh, let's put the other one in. Okay, got the new capacitor in. Let's just check it. Point four six. That's what it should be. Just plug this thing in. Well, that looks a little better. 120 volts. Let's uh, let's check what that power supply voltage is. Now that it's working. It's between the two diodes here. Oh, 14 volts. Kind of surprised it's that big a difference. It was 4 volts. Now it's 14 volts. But uh, let's put this back together and do a few more tests. Okay, we're all back together here. Let's give it a try. Hundred twenty volts, sixty hertz. Got an electric drill here. Amperes. Watts. About a hundred watts. Volt amps. And the power factor. Seems about right. No kilowatt hours yet. So let's uh, plug it in and see if we can accumulate some uh, power usage. Okay, it's running a fluorescent light for a couple of hours now, and it's registering 130 watt hours, so that's about right. 
So all the functions seem to be working. So again, it looks like the problem was just with this voltage drop capacitor. So if you have one of these and have trouble with it, probably the first thing to do is to check the supply voltage. And you can measure that by measuring the voltage between these two diodes. That's very accessible when you take the case apart and you don't have to remove that uh, circuit board. And apparently that's supposed to be about 14 volts. And if it isn't, you can just go ahead and troubleshoot from there. Thanks for watching.